So you know we do these stockpile videos and we try to prepare ourselves. And a lot of times we will go throughout a week, a month, and we'll start picking up other things. And I'll say, man, I totally forgot about that. Well, that's kind of what this video is. Some of these things are pretty common and we should already have these. Some of these things we don't think about and we may not have them until it's too late and you can't find them. So let's talk about 10 things that you need to be stockpiling and prepping and buying now to not only put up, but be able to utilize. See, she agrees when you need. We tend to forget some of these things, but it's some good things that you need to have on your list and in your supply. This video is going to be a good one and it starts right now. Good morning guys, we are actually by our entrance, so you hear the highway, uh, it's, about a, uh, it's about a quarter of a mile right there, but we were by the church and we had to feed the cows this morning, so that's why we're over on this side of the farm this morning. So thank you for being here. If you're new to the Max, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, and hopefully you will get good content out of this video and help build wisdom for you and your family. Let us know what you think about this video, if you like it or you don't like it, uh, and give us your ideas of some things that you may have forgotten that could help other people in the comments. So number one, as we are in this time of year, is going to be warm clothing. We already have warm clothing. It's not just saying you need to go out and buy warm clothing. The point of saying warm clothing is making sure when you're in your automobiles, you have extra clothing, you have extra socks, you have things to get you by in a situation where if you can't make it home. Say for instance, you're building a bug out bag, have extra warm clothing in there. Another thing, you're in the cold season. We're in the cold season here, which in the South Mississippi is kind of laughable for some of you up north, but ultimately we keep our home with blankets and warm clothing laying in the living room for our children and our family. We tend to put our whole life around the fireplace. We tend to make sure that we're not just burning crazy energy and trying to make it feel like it's July outside. So we wanna keep warm clothing on or around us all the time. Getting good quality wool, maybe trying to find US wool, making sure that you're getting stuff that matter. But you need to be purchasing nice, thick wool warm clothing because again energy is getting sparse especially for some of you that's in the north or for the ones who cannot have a fireplace you're fully dependent on the energy and the, the grid working so make sure you have warm clothing make sure you have extra blankets good wool socks you never know what you may come in contact with here in the south it's not as bad we do have our fireplaces it doesn't get as cold but if you're in these colder climates these northern climates prepare get good warm clothes but make sure you have it not only in your home in your automobile not only in your automobile in your bug out bags all the way through stop by warm clothing number two kind of goes along with that making sure you have a good pair of boots now one thing i want to talk about with boots uh i i have i, I don't want just simple rubber boots i don't want simple just western style boots so I milk every morning around four, and when it gets really cold, I want a good insulated boot, but also one that's waterproof, but that can also give me some warmth. So we want the insulation there. We also want some stability. Your feet carry you throughout this world. You don't get another set of feet. So we have to make sure we take care of our feet. So make sure you have a good quality pair of good rubber boots and insulated boots for waterproof and also getting in the muck and mire in the winter weather season, but also having a good pair of, of Western boots. Uh, we are constantly dealing with animals, having a good steel toe boot to wear, to, to mess with these cows, to mess with all these animals that we deal with is very good. You can't wear rubber boots when you're messing with uh, some animals. It just doesn't play out right. So having two pair of boots, a good insulated rubber boot that's waterproof, a good Western style rustic boot is very good, very key. You know, it's a good work boot too to make sure you have a good steel toe to save your feet. Your feet are important. It goes along with clothing, making sure you have good quality boots. And not only have the boots, have a secondary pair. Boots are not cheap, understand that. But by having some, uh, I keep, for instance, the, the truck that you're sitting on uh, right here, 
I keep a second set of boots in my truck just for safety because you never know what I may need them for. You never know where I may get stranded. You never know what may happen. So keeping a second set of boots and socks, to be honest with you, uh, in the truck is key. So now let's leave the clothing. We talked about those few things and a lot of those are pretty easy. People say, oh, that's stuff we already have. We already wear it. So now let's jump into some of the things that we need to look at purchasing or making sure you have good quality tools to get you through some tough times. So number three would be an ax and also a splitting ax. Uh, I like a hatchet. I carry a hatchet in our bug out bag, but I'm not talking about just a hatchet. That's good if you're making kindling or getting small wood. But if it comes down to it and you can't use your chainsaw or you're not in an area that uh, you can replace your uh, blade on your chainsaw, something breaks, maybe you can't get the fuel for it. You need to have a good handsaw or a good ax or a good splitting ax at your disposal. And that may be two or three different tools. Uh, one thing here, I love cutting wood. It's just the season is great. I love using a log splitter and a chainsaw. But there's something about just putting a, a piece of wood on a, on another piece of wood and just break it with an ax. It's, uh, I don't know if it's just the, the manliness, I don't know. I just enjoy it. It's fun. But it's good exercise, good work. It actually gives me and my son time to be together. So having a good ax is a good hobby making thing for our family. It's a good uh, strength builder, fitness builder. It also helps us get in shape, but it makes us where we're not dependent on the energy in the chainsaw or the gas, the petroleum, or worried about if the blade comes off. Having a good ax, having a good saw, is key. Uh, we have a splitting axe. Not only do you have a splitting axe, you need to make sure you have the sharpening stone. So we have these little, uh, they're like, they look like little hockey pucks. But what that is, is that allows us to sharpen our axes and make sure they're always at the best of their capability. So grab a good hatchet, grab a good axe, grab a good splitting axe, even grab a little handsaw. Those things are very good to put up in your tools. Another good thing to have, and this is even for some people who live in the city who are not just gonna, you know, use these all the time, but you need to have some kind of, some kind of varmint catching traps. So it may be a, a leg trap. It may be a, a, like a coon trap where uh, an animal has to go in the door closes. Having some kind of way to, to catch rodents or to catch some kind of uh, smaller game is key. Now, we say that because not only are you maybe needing to hunt or you're needing to provide food, it may be to protect your stockpile. If I, this could be simple as small rat traps. This could be roach traps. Uh, I'm thinking a little bit bigger, so is varmint traps, uh, what we call coon traps. Uh, anything like that is key. It allows us to know that our stockpiles and everything is safe. We also have barns. We also have smaller animals. We keep some traps around that for safety of those animals. Or are you safe? Say you're camping and you're needing some bigger traps to make sure it catches anything that's coming your way. It's not a bad thing. So make sure that if you are trying to catch a fox, coyote, rabbit, squirrel, rat or roach you have something to do that you're not dependent on chasing it with your axe number five would be a sewing kit this is another thing that we don't realize how important it is we keep a sewing kit in our bug out supply in our bug in supply in our vehicles and of course in our home now the benefit to that is to make sure that if all of a sudden we have a rip in a wool sock that's very important if we have a rip in one of our better jackets or we're dealing with animals and they get caught on this barbed wire those things need to be mended i don't want to just throw away stuff if i'm buying good quality winter wear if i'm buying good quality insulated bibs i want to make sure that we are keeping those for instance i have some insulated bibs that if you look at the back of them they're like half ripped up and everywhere have little marks on them but everywhere that is it's been stitched misty has fixed them because we want to keep those because they're they're we enjoy them we like them and they're going to keep on getting ripped because of all the things that we have to do on the farm so i would make sure that you have a good small sewing kit that goes along with you if you don't know how to just mend clothing i think you need to learn that men and women make sure you understand how to mend your own clothing to fix a big insulated jacket i don't want to pay 80 to 100 dollars every time i need a jacket because it has a little rip in it and then all of a sudden we wash it and it just tears to pieces that's not being smart and not being a good steward so make sure you get good quality clothing make sure you have the sewing kit to fix any little thing that needs to be mended uh, if you're outside a lot you know you're going to rip and tear if you have kids i have six kids six kids so that means we have to use our sewing kit a good bit. So make sure that you have a good quality little sewing kit with you at all times. 
bugging in, bugging out, and also in your home, it will make you more appreciative of what you have as well. Number six is going to be something that you can think about putting in your bug out supplies. Also, we keep one in our truck. Uh, not that we want to be um, a scavenger or anything like that, but if it comes to a point where we have to get home, we're in a chaotic situation or a societal issue uh, that's bad, or we're trying to help someone off the side of the road. Uh, we have a siphon. We keep a siphon, a gas siphon and a water siphon in our supplies. Now, those two things can be as simple as a you know, garden hose or a hose pipe cut in half and you being the true siphon and sucking it up like a straw. I would challenge you to watch that and be careful of that because if you're doing gas or you're doing some kind of contaminated water or some kind of fuel you're getting or some kind of liquid that you don't know if it's good for you, that could be dangerous. So I, I do have a style garden hose as, as kind of a easy siphon and a quick siphon, but I don't wanna have to use that because I don't need any contamination going into my face or into uh, my body. So we also have hand siphons where they have little pump mechanisms on it. I'll show you the one we've got right here. Now, you don't have to buy this certain style. There is hundreds of styles of siphons even down to the water well that we have it's a form of a siphon that's all that is doing so have a few extra little siphons i keep two one for more um, gas use and uh, chemical use one for more water use say i have to get water up and we don't have the live straws or we're needing to get some kind of water to utilize for something else it's good to have those siphons i keep them in our bug out supply we also keep them in our vehicles uh say for instance you have someone on the side of the road and you want to help them but you're nowhere near a gas pump it may be one of those situations you can just pump a little bit out of your tank into their tank and now you have been a good samaritan you've helped someone and hopefully get them to where they need to go number seven would be a digitized version of your files now this is going to easily be hackable so i'm not saying leave it on your phone unprotected in your notepad you need to have a simple guide of very important documents on you or with you or to where you can access them no matter what happens so say for instance you're having to get away from your home you need to have a digitized version of maybe a will maybe some insurance documentation maybe where some of your things are maybe maps or passwords it may be things that you need to be able to pass to someone else or your children one day so we keep a usb with very important things on it we also keep one computer that has no access to wi-fi capabilities uh, or bluetooth capabilities and is password protected now that computer probably still could be hacked but what i'm saying is it's a way that we try to to where if we need to look at that usb if we need to access those documents we can do it on a computer that does not have the wi-fi capabilities it is an older computer that we've updated to where we can utilize it when we need to but it really has never been hooked up to internet it's never had access we don't even access emails on it nothing like that it is simply to where we can look at a document if we need to now that might not be the answer for you it may be keeping hard copies and laminating them and put them in your backpack putting them in your car we laminate a lot of our uh, documents that are important and we put them up so there may be ways that you need to just have a birth certificate a passport uh, a death certificate of a loved one a will any of those documents by having them on a jump drive like a digital version or having them laminated and a duplicate copy somewhere put up very safe maybe in a cache somewhere maybe at someone else's home that's good. You don't realize how important documentation is, especially in the world that we're so overregulated in until you don't have it. So have those things placed safely, have a duplicate copy somewhere or have a digitized form of it. Make sure it is taken care of. Don't just put it on your, uh, you know, your emails or don't just put it uh, on your phone, on your notepad. Have some safety elements there and be thinking about ways you could do that. Number eight, and I've mentioned this before, especially in the uh, Everyday Carrier, the EDC video that we did, having a good quality knife on you at all times is very good. Uh, especially as a, a little boy or a male, or like even my girls, my girls carry it in their little bags, you know, they have their little side satchel bags. It's always good to have a knife and teaching your children and teaching uh, good etiquette with a knife. We don't play with it, we don't throw it around, we don't, we don't act stupid they are foolish by having this, but it could be something that we can utilize if we ever need. I know on our farm and I know on outside and when we're exteriorly walking around, I'm going to notoriously need my knife all the time. There is actually times like if me and Aiden are even playing uh, basketball or we're outside and he, he's in like basketball shorts and I'm just running in and out to get something and I'll say, man, where is my knife? 
And it's just because I'm not in work attire and I realize how bad I need that. So make sure you have a good quality knife on you at all times. It may be a simple set that has a skinning option on it. It may be a longer knife, a shorter knife, a switch blade. It may be a multi-purpose tool. You need to have some kind of everyday carry knife at your disposal to be able to utilize. You never know when you may need to just use it. Uh, if you have a knife, you know that, you use it all the time. If you don't carry one, I challenge you to start carrying one. It's very good to have. The reason I put it on this prepping list is not only for you to carry as an everyday carry, but also make sure you have a backup, make sure you know how to sharpen a knife. Uh, actually, what's so funny, I made this comment yesterday, we were doing a butchering with some of our uh, friends that we know, and we were just trying to help them go through a chicken processing and, uh, and learn how to do that. So we had our knives and I carry a certain set of knives just for butchering. However, my son has become awesome. Aiden is like the knife sharpening guru. So a lot of times his job is we will use a certain set of knives and then he'll say, I'll take those. So then we'll use a second set while we're working with the first set. So we have several knives that we're using for skinning, processing, breaking down animals but also being able to have a secondary set of those knives or a second set of everyday carries to be able to cut simple things to utilize them. You never know what you may need them for. It's good to have a knife, maybe good to have a few knives and make sure they're good quality, good USA made knives. And they can also get you have a lot of hard times. When it comes to storing food, now we believe in stockpiling. So number nine would be having some kind of food grade long-term storage when it comes to your food. If you buy food, that's great, but you have to find ways to put it up or you're gonna have varmints or you're gonna have roaches or insects coming to get them. So number nine would be Mylar bags and food grade buckets. Now we have talked about Mylar bags and food grade buckets in a lot of other videos, but what we tend to do is we will skim over that part. We'll talk about stockpiling food and buying flour and sugar and corn and rice and beans but just having them and putting them in the freezer is good but there may be times you need the freezer space what are you going to do with them you don't want to leave them in that that cheap plastic that they're putting in you don't want to leave them in brown paper sacks to where they can be accessed by bucks because bucks can get in there so you need to seal them up and the only ways to seal them up and keep the you know the harsh rays the sun rays and the uv rays off of them is through a mylar bag Mylar bags are great. If you don't like using Mylar bags, then at least use a food grade bucket and make sure you have the sealable tops. Now for me, we'll buy the food grade buckets and we'll buy some sealable tops, but for the most time, we're gonna double insulate. So we're gonna go with a Mylar bag and then into a food grade bucket. So then the top is not as much uh, a situation where I'm worried about it sealing like, you know, uh, with a gasket. It may be just simply for stackable use there because the sealing is in the Mylar bag. Now, if you're doing salts and uh, like pickling limes, we don't actually seal those like we would seal our traditional food. If we're having corn, if we're having rice, we're having beans, we're having flour, sugars, all those things go in Mylar bags. So having a good bit of Mylar bags and food grade buckets is key. You can pick up food grade buckets online or you can pick them up at like your local co-ops. Uh, Walmart has food grade buckets. I know people say that they don't have them in their Walmarts. Ours literally have them all the time. Make sure it has that label on there saying food grade. And then you can buy the tops the same places. Make sure you're getting good quality tops because your bucket's only as good as the seal that's on the top. If you're not buying the tops for sealing, make sure you have good Mylar bags. We'll link some Mylar bags below. Mylar bags at one point were kind of hard to come by. They're back in stocks. So I challenge you to pick up all sizes. We have the smaller sizes for seeds, medicines maybe. Uh, we have the mid size for smaller things that we're trying to put up. And then of course we have the big one gallon, three gallon and five gallon options for the buckets and for mass storage. So it'd be good to have for sure. Number 10 is so important and we talk about growing a lot here on our farm. As we were talking yesterday, processing birds. As we talk about growing, uh, we did a video about survival growing and what to grow in the winter just a few weeks ago. For number 10, I wanna show you this, uh, this growing situation I've got going on. You can grow this on a balcony, you can grow it indoors, you can grow it exterior wise. It's a great addition, but I wanna show you these. It almost reminds you of a cattle trough. That's not what it is. These are Vivega raised beds that you can purchase. They come in all shapes and sizes, small, big, large. You can add to them. They, they're made to where you can build them. They send them to you in a little pack. 
and then you can build them based on if you want a square you want a rectangle you want it circular there's ways it's, it's like 30 and one kind of ways that you can build this raised bed I have about five of these uh, at our home we actually bought these for some Christmas presents too because we encourage people to grow now if you're growing inside you may want to line this with some kind of really nice uh, agribond or high-end garden plastic to keep the water from you know getting on your floors definitely but if you could grow this on a terrace a porch a balcony have these you don't realize how much you can plant in them right here in permaculture zone one in the kitchen gardens what we call them we have about a hundred cloves on one side and then we have some lettuce and about another hundred cloves on the other side so we're constantly growing a lot of food in them you can use them for perennial stuff you can use them for herbs or you can use them for annual growing make sure you pick one of these up or pick a few of these up or when christmas is coming around this is something you can give because now you're giving someone the option to grow now we have a link to this company you're welcome to check those out there's a thousand of these companies out there but the reason i like this company is you can hand build these very easy with just a few screws and it allows you to grow wherever you are there's also a discount code it's the max it's tied down there we'll link all that if you're interested in ours they come in several colors and all that good stuff but what i am challenging you, you to do is get to growing and making sure you're picking up some raised beds or some options to grow uh, i i know we've done grow bags grow bags are not bad at all i think grow bags are very good but grow bags do tend to release water so if you're trying to grow inside grow bags may not be the best option if you're going in some porches where you're worried about water you know standing and having mosquitoes that may not be the best option for you but these raised beds are excellent it also is um, gonna last a lot longer than just your typical wood so we've incorporated it on our farm and our homestead and it's been a game changer for us so number 10 making sure you're growing making sure you're growing in raised beds these vivega raised beds are grow bags these structures are very good to have let me know what you have on this list some of these things are very easy winter wear boots knives no big deal but things like the siphon things like ways to grow indoors ways to grow in an apartment ways to sharpen your axe to be able to have firewood how important that is we need to make sure that we are well rounded and well versed can we can you sew up your own clothes can you mend those wool socks or those wool jackets that you have it's very important to learn good skills to have good tools and making sure you are taking care of your family stockpiling prepping is good but we need to prep spiritually we need a revival in america and i'm hoping that uh, it starts with people like us that are just trying to have common sense approach to living a life that is pleasing to christ but also loving on our family guys thank you again for watching have a great day. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.